Jones has been key in the, in, in on the defensive board. Irving all over Bird. Harris double teamed by the guard. Bo Cheeks. Henderson lost it for the moment. Picks it up alertly. Henderson in the corner. Gerald Henderson, who started 28 games after Archibald went out. Actually, he began last year as the point guard when Tiny was hurt. Five point Philadelphia lead. 4.05 to go. Bobby Jones, the leading scorer in the game, misses. Uh, Henderson clears it in the corner. Here come the Celtics. They have not had a bona fide fast break yet. Bird, a take on Bobby Jones, a foul on Maurice Cheeks. And Cheeks got hit in the process. <laughs> As a couple of guys filled up, your cheeks and Bobby Jones both got uh, a hit in the chin for their trouble. That's the 13 foul on Philadelphia, under four minutes to go, first period. This is the kind of game that will build. McHale, drop score. He gets good percentage shots, and that's why he thinks he should always shoot 50% from that range. Kevin McHale, who's averaged over 15 a game. Tony, basket, no, but the foul, yes. And it's on Ainge, his first personal foul, and the Celtics are in the penalty. Ainge got a technical last Sunday against Philadelphia. For holding his ears. <laughs> Daryl Dawkins, who has had some good scoring games coming off the bench. He started game one, and Bobby Jones goes to the bench. Dawkins is the only 76er shooting above 50% of this series. But they need a big game from him today. Tony misses the free throw. See, it'll be tortured these last few hours before this game because he's been this way before, been to this spot before. Tony now with 10, the high score in the ball game. Jones on the bench with eight. And Dawkins is guarding Parrott. Tony is on eight. As we said, Dawkins is guarding Parrott. Henderson at the free throw line, and it goes. And that's the shot you have to hit to exploit when they double team. You should try to get at least a free throw if you can out of it. A jump trap in the foul line. That's taking good advantage on that play with Gerald Henderson. Double teaming Julius. They double team Tony in the foul. That's exactly what Boston wants to do. They figure that Irving and Tony are the two main guns for Philadelphia, and they will double team them every time they put the ball on the floor. Meanwhile, Gerald Henderson has picked up his first foul, so six, seven different Celtics have one personal foul in the game. And one thing about the, the Celtic defense, when they double team Tony and Julius Irving, Julius is a great passer, and so he's made the guys pay the price, so there's a little hesitation on double teaming him now. But Tony, they want to make sure that he is a good passer today. Sometimes Andrew will hold the ball and you see four people standing around. That's what happened in game five that hurt Philadelphia. Two shots for Andrew. the 76ers get off to an early lead for their side because of the stigma of Friday night's collapse and also a cushion because Kevin McHale somehow gets the Celtics back in the thing. The swing of things. Under three minutes to go. Henderson gets loose. And Dawkins the rebound. He has not averaged many rebounds, but then again in his career he hasn't done that. Well, the way they play defense, it is hard for any player to average a lot of rebounds. Because the way they play uh, defense out on the floor, that you're switching and picking up and you're running the picks and etc. It's, it's not easy for a guy to accumulate a large number of rebounds, no matter how tall he is. For the record, Daryl Dawkins is 6 feet 11 inches tall. He averaged six rebounds a game during his career. Just wanted to clear that up. As for the game, Philadelphia leads by four late in the first quarter. They're trying to become only the second team ever to beat the Celtics in a game seven at Boston Garden. And we'll get back to the action right after a timeout for some Sixers trivia. Sixer rivalry was actually born with the battles between Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain, and it was rekindled in the early 80s with Larry Bird and Julius Irving. 
Boston and Philly met three consecutive years in the playoffs. They split the first two meetings, so it seemed altogether fitting and proper. It would come down to a seventh and deciding game in 1982. Sixers still lead by four as we pick up the action in the third quarter. Put the carbon paper on it because this is one of those moments, 64-60, mark it down, where Boston is starting a surge. And how Philadelphia reacts could determine the story of this game. Bantam picked up his fourth personal foul. Philadelphia already over the limit. The Celtics with 14 fouls. 6.05 to go in the third period. And a two-point game. And 20 for Larry. Eight in a row for the Celtics. They make a habit of this kind of ball. Tony. Sixers have been in this position before. And Andrew Tony hits a jump shot, has 18 points. Here comes Ains, loops it to Maxwell and out of bounds. Over Maxwell, turning it over. And Fitz yells something to Danny Ains. That was not a good play. Now Ains is trying to make a play, and you've got to do that. But that the percentages were not with him on that play. On that play, if you got to throw a perfect pass, don't try it. Set up and see what you can get, because they got, they're in foul trouble anyway. Keep in mind that Henderson is on the bench with five fouls. Carr and Ainge are the guards, with Ainge the role of point guard. Bird is on Phantom. Not been a scoring threat for a long time. Cheeks wheeling around to Irving. Ainge double teams. Cheeks is open. And Mo hits the shot. So the two guards, Tony and Cheeks, have hit key baskets here. And Philadelphia opens it up to six again. 5.15 to go. And Ainge barely gets it across. And throws it away again. Two turnovers by Danny Ainge in succession. And Bill Fitz biting on that towel, taking a walk along the bench. The turnover story. Five minutes to play in the third. Game is simmering here. Cheeks. Game seven. One game season for one of these clubs. Goes home, the winner goes to the championship round. Julia Serving misses the bank, but Mike Bannon is in there for the follow. Big offensive rebound and hoop for Mike Bantam. And an eight-point lead, and Bill Fitch will call timeout. And if you wanted Philadelphia's reaction to a 64-60 lead and the Celtics coming on, you saw it right here. Now, there were two key turnovers. But what, that's what happens when, when you have rookies in a key situation. They'll make some mistakes, but they, they, most of the time they make up forward hustle. Harris turnaround shot in and out. Bantam fights, loses the ball, and is put up by M.L. Carr. Clutch rebound by Carr. So Philadelphia had scored six in a row before that bucket. Yeah, you're right about Danny Ainge, but Ainge has probably played better than anyone expected in this tough role with Tiny out of there. Andrew Tony hits from the baseline, so it looks as if Tony's not shy with the shot right now. 20 he, points. He's playing a little better than, than uh, he played Friday night, I can tell you that. I would think. One for 11 in the game, zero for four in the second half, and three points. He has Check scored well against down. Boston. Listen to Cunningham. Check out. Paul misses. Paris comes in, roaring in and is fouled. Caldwell Jones and Robert Parrish may be the most important matchup in this ball game at this point as Ainge gets some on-the-job instruction from Bill Fitch. Yeah, that's a key matchup in this, in this game in particular. Caldwell Jones has to play well for Philadelphia to, to really be competitive with the, with the good teams. And he's playing fairly well today. He's done a good job on the defensive boards. And he's a real smart player, too. You never hear those outstanding quotes and things from him, but he's a real smart player. And anyone that's associated with the Philadelphia team will tell you that. Parrish now with 13 points. Tony from the corner hits again. Well, he is on the mark. Andrew Tony, 22 points, the leading scorer in the game. Bird has 20. And Andrew's 9 for 14 from the field. Danny Ainge with Bird up top. Parrish inside in the crowd. What a play by Robert Parrish. He can hit from outside, go inside, block shots, you name it. Robert Powers has emerged as an outstanding center this season. 3-14 remaining, third period, six-point Philadelphia lead. Biggest lead in the game was 10 by the Sixers with 7.40 to go this period. And Cheeks is hit, so the guards have kept them going. Yeah, he's playing a little, a little more aggressive. He's taking his shots. But what he does such a good job is run that offense and control the tempo for him. 
Ten points this period for Mo. Falls down guarding eight. 